so welcome back to my channel uh this is gonna be a recap of greenleaf season three episode five closing doors so may is in her office at calvary and she's looking over the uh school of divinity at howard university and so she, she gets a phone call and it's from clara his name clara and basically the phone call the gist of it was that she was not going to give them the money so she rushes over to uh, Bishop's office and he said, yeah, I just got off the phone with her money, her, uh, her financial guy. And, you know, he feels um, awkward about it because it's a personal loan instead of as something going to the church. And OK, which makes sense because you asked this one for two million dollars, not two thousand dollars, not even two hundred thousand dollars, two million dollars for a, for a personal loan. So, OK, that makes sense to me. But um May took this time to advise Bishop that he should step aside and let her take over and that the tax um, issues would become her problem and not his. And so, of course, it was the blame game. And she was like, well, you said you were going to fix this. And he, he was like, Yo, it was your brother that got us into this situation. She was like, it was you and him, which it was. Because May can't do shit that Bishop didn't know about, for real, for real. Let's stop. Let's stop. And so she's like, yeah, I didn't see you complaining when the collection place was going around. And she's like, you told me that that money was tax exempt. And you're like, because Matt told me it was tax exempt. And so they did the whole thing. And she basically said, you know what? Step aside, step down. I'll take over. And the tax problems, the tax issues will be my problem. And he basically told her, uh, no, that's not how things work. If you decide to get divorced, then the, the doors will be, will be closing on you. That's just the, uh, the nature of things. And he walked out. He didn't say his ass on out the office. She stood there with that look on her face like, okay, honey. Okay. So, I was surprised. I was expecting to see Charity behind bars. But she was at back at uh, Greenleaf Manor. And she was packing an overnight bag. And, uh, um, Gigi walks in. And she said, are you um, getting things ready? Because I think uh, Nathan's going to go with Kevin for a week. And so, Ch Charity is mad at Gigi. And she said, um, she was like, I'm just, well, I just stopped by to check on you. She was like, uh, like, I tried to just Gigi talk. I tried to, I told him, I wasn't, well, I told him, I asked him not to uh, call the police. She said, well, what did you tell them before, I, before they put me in handcuffs? Well, I told him not to press charges. She was, she was like, if you would have just called me, I could have, I would have just came and got you. And so she basically was like, just get out, just get out. And so Gigi was just like, you know what? I'm just looking at this damn family and their fuckery and them blaming me for their bullshit. And so Charity is, so Gigi leaves. And while Charity's packing the bag, there's a bottle of oxycodone, uh, prescription for oxycodone. And I'm like, what does she need that for? But, so I don't know if you're insinuating, did, did she have a drug, drug problem? Is she about to have a drug problem? I mean, I just, who, who the hell knows? So, uh, May knocks on Zora's door. It's early in the morning. She's like, okay, it's time. you need to get up and be up by such such time for a uh, Bible study. So they're downstairs at the table and she's, you know, going they're having their little study and Zora comes down to go for a run and she said, hey, good morning, Zora. And Zora snapped her nasty ass, just sat there and, and May said, Zora, and so she goes, good morning. It's like, <sighs> okay, so basically Zora was like, okay, good morning, grandma. Like being her usual, usual sweet self, which kind of put which kind of made Zora feel some kind of way, like, oh, look, this goody two shoes bitch. What she called her, the, a hoe, a, a bitch for Jesus, or a hoe for Jesus, what she called her the last episode, that's just basically how she see uh, Sophia. And so Sophia went for her run, and as she was coming back, you kind of see she started to have some pain in her side. So I don't know if she's um, having some issue with her appendix or something, but it's like she, she stopped and she was like kind of breathing real hard. She was like, oh, Lord, don't tell me that uh, Sophia's going to have. Um, that's how, I'm hoping that it's something that's quickly treatable, but it looks like they're about to have a health crisis on their hands with Sophia. Um, and, uh, so we're back at Calvary and Connie walks in, Miss Dickie and herself, and May took this time to talk to her because she's trying, now she's, now she's, uh, politics she's campaigning right to get as many people on her side as possible 
So she said, well, you know, uh, I don't want you to worry about this tax problems um, because we're gonna, we, everything is gonna work itself out. You know, I spoke with the bishop about stepping aside and letting someone else step in. And we're gonna, we're gonna, um, you know, where everything, you know, everything's gonna work. She's like, well, I'm just surprised to hear that. And she said, yeah, and I just want everybody to, uh, to put everybody at ease and that I would be, uh, that I would be stepping up. And she's like, um, Tony was like, um, um, I thought we discussed this. She said, I think that we, she said, we, Connie was like, and the deacon board, and I guess anybody else that matters, are in agreement that it should be a, an interested third party. And so Mate was like, well, who, who, well, who in the world would you, do you have in mind as this uninterested third party? And she was like, uh, Gigi, you could have bought Mae for a penny. She sat there with her eyes like, so here I'm just waiting for her to storm into Gigi's office and blame her for some shit like, come on now. All of this mess is the creation of you and your husband and your brother. And somehow Gigi is always the target of their rage and vitriol. So I'm gonna keep watching to see what they're talking about. Okay, so Sophia is at the school and she's teaching the young children. Uh, I guess it's, I don't wanna say Sunday school. I don't even know what day it is. But the kids are there and she was, uh, they, she was playing a game with them. She had one of the children blindfolded and other children kind of watched. And she kind of talked them through on how, um, talked the child through on how to get to this, this chair that was across the room. And she was basically comparing that to faith and how faith is about trusting and believing in God. And even though that you can't see, uh, can't see it, that doesn't mean that it's, that it's not real. And so, okay, it was a cute little lesson, okay. And so Bishop, he called Percy um, over and they're sitting there and talking. He, because some, at some point in the past, Percy had some tax issues and he wanted to kind of pick his brain, pick his brain on how he um, was able to get out of it. And so Percy said, why don't you, you should be talking to Rochelle, not me. And he's like, well, he's like, uh, basically Bishop was like, um, no, that's really not a good idea. I said, yeah, because she's into that cryptocurrency. And of course, Bishop is a man of a certain age. He's like, crypto what? He said, yeah, she's into that. He was like, well, how did you hear about it? He's like, oh, on the internet. He's like, what are you doing on the internet? And so basically, he asked him for Rochelle's number. And he was basically trying to uh, make him out. What did, he, what did he say about Percy? He said, you're, uh, you're a bad influence or something to that, to that nature. And so, as we thought, May went into Gigi's office and she talked to her like, yeah, I had a, I had a talk with Connie and she said that you were uh, thinking about taking over uh, at Cal at, here at uh, Calvary. And Gigi's like, Mom, I have no plans on doing that. Well, that's good because you know how, your, how it would make your father feel to know that you were about to take the church right up from under him. Now hear this bitch again trying to chastise somebody for the district for what she believes they're about to do the same shit that she's trying to do. She was like, Ma, I don't want Calvary. I want you and, I want you and Daddy to uh, figure this out. You guys are losing Calvary all on your own. People are talking. Everybody knows what's going on. The tax, you know, they already got the tax business in the newspaper. You guys are doing a good job of losing this church all on your own. I don't want Calvary. And so, May stood up and was like, good, because you're never going to get it. And I'm just like, May girl, if you this is you campaigning, girl, you're going about this shit all the wrong way. And so you go to Charity and Kevin. So Charity, you know, comes down. Uh, Kevin is there to pick uh, pick up Nathan, and she goes down and hands Nathan uh, to uh, to Kevin. And she just throws the bag on the floor, the uh, overnight bag, and walks back up the stairs. And he just kind of stood there and looked at looked at her. And. Uh, he picked the bag up and walked on, and she went into the room, went into her room, and just broke down. Now, hey, look, I'm trying to, I'm confused. It looked like when she pulled that bottle, that prescription bottle of Oxycontin out, that she had put it in the bag. So now I'm just like, okay, is he gonna open that bag and pull some stuff out for the baby and see the the, the, the prescription? Like I don't, I'm confused by it, but she had a little breakdown, and uh, so we're back back at Calvary, and. Gigi confronts Connie. She said, yeah, well, did you talk? You told my mom that I wanted to take over here? And she's like, oh, I see. She came and talked to you. She's like, well, yeah, she did. But she's like, yeah, she was pissed. Um, she was like, yeah, um, sh 
finished, um, basically Connie's still campaigning for Gigi to take over. And, and she was like, well, Con uh, Gigi was like, well, no, because in order for me to take over, there would have to be a lot of changes and we would be, uh, have to be more progressive. And I'd want to take the church into a dire in a direction that there's people are just not ready to go. And, uh... Connie was like, um, so what if we can meet halfway? And basically, Gigi was like, there is no halfway. We're either going to be all inclusive or we're not. And Connie basically was like, okay, well, what I see happening is with all of the fighting and the fussing between your parents and the tax issues, what I eventually see is a, a for sale sign out in front of this church. And that's going to be change. And so now Gigi is sitting there like, okay. So it's like she's being backed into a corner where no matter what choice she makes, she's going to be upsetting somebody. So if she doesn't take over, then the people at the church, people who, who believe in, you know, the church and that's, you know, it's been their church home forever and a day and they love Calvary and they want it to be, you know, want it to be around. If she don't take the church and then the lose the church, then the people are going to resent her. If she steps up and takes over at the church, then her parents are going to resent her. Her family's going to resent her. So it's like she's constantly being put in these situations where it's like it's just a lose lose situation for her. Like she can't win no matter which way she turns. So Rochelle is, you know, still trying to dig her heels in, right? So uh, she had, she gave uh, Tasha some papers to give to Jacob to sign. And so Tasha was like, well, what, did, what, what are these? He was like, a Tasha, uh, well, she was like, most of them are uh, just nothing, but there's a document in there for funds transfer or authorization for a bank or something to put money in that I need you to get him to sign. And so Tasha hesitant was like, oh, okay. So she goes into the church and she was gonna do it until she saw Jacob in the office with, uh, I forget his son's name. She was in there playing chess, they were in there playing chess. And so I think it, it kind of like, it made her feel some kind of way. Cause she see, now sees Jacob as a person that, you know, before in the early stages of the whole issue with uh, Basie, she just saw him as a person that broke up her marriage. And uh, she was just all, she was all in to get back at them. But now after spending time with him, she sees that he's just a, a real guy with, you know, who's trying to do right by his family. He's not, I guess, that guy that she thought he was in the beginning. And then when you compare how he, him to Basie, um, she just, and I, I think it really just warmed her heart to see him in there with her son. And so she just couldn't do it. And so she went back out to the car and she was like, did you get him to sign it? And you could start seeing her face like, uh, I, I, I just, it just wasn't the right time. And Tasha was like, do you want to see Basie again? Well, she was like, well, well yeah. I said, well, you need to make it the right time. She was like, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get him to sign tomorrow. She was like, I see that you do. And so after the conversation with um, Percy, where did, where did Bishop show up? He's there getting himself all spruced up, getting his, his jacket all buttoned up. Who comes down the steps? Rochelle. So in the end, he eventually goes to her anyway. When he knows that that's just a... When May finds out, he knows it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a, a bunch of bullshit. So why he even did that is anybody's business. But uh, I guess he's just that desperate, right? So she came down and he tried that whole I'm a, I'm a apologize and you were right and you know I didn't treat you fairly and the whole nine. So they're still in the lobby and they go to sit down on the chair, and then she said, "Oh, was that all? You came to um to apologize?" And basically, he was like, yeah, she said, well, because I'm a Christian, I forgive you. And so he's like, uh, yeah, and uh, there was something else. Um, I saw, I know you saw the paper. And she was like, yeah, so did everybody else. And he basically was going to ask her for financial advice. But she was like, uh, you don't get to just toss me out like trash and then come and ask me for advice. No. And so she told the security guard, if he comes, she's like, if he comes back, don't tell me about it. And she was sashaying going upstairs and he walked out looking like a, the damn fool that he is. So, Sophia still trying to, still trying to, 
I don't know, trying to repair her relationship with Zora. Zora sitting there with the little headphones on and the, and the uh, CD player. She was like, oh, that's taking it back. And Zora was like, well, my, my, my uh, iPod was confiscated. And so she was, uh, she asked her if she wanted to go to Zaxby's and Zora was like, I'd rather eat my socks. And uh, so uh, Sophie was like, I don't really want to hang out with you either. And then she could see that the, the page, she had the page to get on her side. And then Zora, Zora was like, what's wrong with you? And she was like, I don't know, it's just, just been this pain. So Zora was like, oh, well, maybe you're pregnant. And then she got up and walked off. And so Sophia got up and, and the pain that got so bad, she collapsed. And so you see Charity, Charity is upstairs. So we find out, thank God she didn't put the, the oxycodone in the bag by mistake. So she's sitting there, I guess the vents are play, playing in her over, you know, going over in her head. And so she runs to the drawer and she pops a pill. Telling people Geico can help you save money on car insurance. So she runs into the drawer and pops a pill. And I do feel, even though I think the trying to make some some screwed up decisions, I do feel bad for her because I can, you know, I do see where she does get brushed to the side, you know. Uh, there is some truth in what she says. And the fact that, you know, she lost a child, which is never discussed. You've never seen her get any help. There's been no, you know, counseling or anything. It's like the child never even existed, right? And I mean, technically the child died in her womb, but it was still, as her, it happening to her, she still feels as a loss. So she was never get, there was never any compassion or anything that has to do with that. Her marriage, the, the bad she thought she was going to spend the rest of her life with, turns out to be, no, well, no, that's, that didn't work out either. So her marriage fell apart. Her dreams of being her of being a singer, that's kind of falling apart. The guy she thought, the dad, she fell in love with another guy who was more in love with her talent than her. And so that came to an end. And it's like, at this point, she really doesn't know where she fits in and... Charity needs help. She she needs she she needs help. And I don't know if we can say the things that she's been doing has been a cry for help, and that's just cries have just been gone, um, just been uh, gone ignored. But like I said, I could do see that she she's struggling, and she's just out there like a tumbleweed, just blowing in the wind. Like she just doesn't. She's just out there. And so she pops the pill and she goes and lays in the bed, and I guess that's where she's gonna be until whatever the the pill wears off or whatever. So, um, we're back at Calvary and she's talking to, uh, Gigi's talking to Darius about the whole situation and, you know, they're just laughing and she said, well, you know, he asked her if she wanted to be first lady and she was like, well, not right now, but maybe he said, you could be first gentleman. He was like, is that what they're calling it? He was like, yeah. He was like, how about first boyfriend? He's like, uh, uh, no, that's a no go. They would never accept that. Neither would I. And so the phone rings and she's like, oh, that's my mom. And so he kind of looked at her like, just answer the phone. And she's like, all right, she's just going to yell at me. And um, she answers the phone. You can tell by her facial expression that she got to call about something that's happened to Sophia. So, so Gigi's at the hospital. She um, She's in the room talking to Sophia. She finds out what the problem is. They said it's a lap. She said have a laparotomy, a lap, something, uh, some kind of procedure, right? But she's going to have to have surgery. And so she went out into the uh, waiting room where everybody else gave them an update. They had to prep Sophia for the surgery. Faye, uh, Charity's high ass is sitting there loud as fuck. She jumps up and tells sister um, Gigi, her sister, who has a daughter that's about to go into surgery. You know, I lost a child, so girl, don't worry, I got you. And she's going on and on and on. And people are like, shut down, like, shut up. She was loud as hell. So of course that pissed Gigi off. So she walked off. And so then you flash to charity. She's still loud. She's at the vending machine trying to get some shit out the vending machine, some candy bar. It took her money. She's banging on the vending machine. Chris is like, girl, what's going on? And what's wrong? She said, I took my money. So Chris is digging for change. And she's like, I just want my, I just want my candy bar. And she butts her fist through the glass of the vending machine, reaches in there, snatches the candy bar starts eating the candy bar and they're looking at her like oh my god because now her hands her up her hands all cut up and bloody she was like i'm gonna need stitches and somebody gonna need a lawyer uh yeah bitch you you just damaged their property what the hell 
So she they and so she ended up having to get medical treatment. And I think uh May is talking to talking to them about she has some oxycodone, she has some oxycodone left over from when she had the her C-section or something, uh some some kind of procedure. And so now they're dealing with uh Sophia going into surgery which kills everybody's all word. And you got Faith with her, her crackhead ass in the damn hospital acting the fool, putting her fist through vending machines and having to have, now she has to have surgery. And now they're thinking, okay, we're going to never have to deal with this shit with her because we don't know if she's going to be turned into a full-blown drug problem or what. And so, um, Gigi is in the, uh, in the little, uh, church, I forget what they call it, in the hospital. She's in there praying. And then eventually the fan, uh, they uh, May and Bishop, they're standing in the hallway, and he was like, you know, these kids, they need their family. I'm like, they're not kids anymore. They're grown-ass people who just need to get their shit together. But he said they need their parents, and she was like, James, what are you proposing? And, and you know, basically, he wants them to reconcile and whatever. And she was like, yeah, they, they do need, they need their mother and father. But I don't know if we'll ever be parents again, or she made some comment like that. And she just looked at him, and she went on, because now Charity's behind us in a wheelchair, so they're pushing her down the hall. And so they go into the uh, the thing where uh, Gigi is sitting to pray. And Charity has, you know, she got herself together enough to get up out the wheelchair. She went and sat near uh, Gigi to comfort her um, during this time. So that was a hot ass mess. That that was a that was a horrible display, honey. Charity, that was a horrible display. So Sophia makes it through the surgery, and the doctor is giving uh, Gigi an update on what what was actually going on with Sophia and he said that they found the reason for the obstruction there was something going on where it was she had two large cysts on her ovaries and there was some necrosis, necrosis which is some dead tissue and there wasn't enough healthy healthy tissue left and so basically they had to give her a hysterectomy and so of course Gigi is devastated because now she's going to have to tell her 16 year old daughter that she's never going to I mean she could still be a mother but that she's never going to experience have that experience and so um, a little while later Sophia wakes up and Gigi has to tell her and it was a very sad a very heart wrenching emotional moment um, as you would expect Sophia was devastated and cried and you can see Gigi she's trying to stay strong for her daughter but she's devastated as well you know it's just it was just a horrible a horrible um situation uh Tasha she you know J Jacob's just you know he's distracted he got all the stuff going on so he's not paying attention and I guess he's just so used to her putting paper with his paperwork in front of him so she eventually puts all the stack of paperwork in front of him and he signs it. And she's talking to him and letting him know what's going on. And you can see Tasha, you know, she's get her conscience is getting the best of her. But still she lets him go on and he signs, she signs, he signs the papers. And so she walks out of the office and she stops and she looks at the paper and she's I'm thinking that she's gonna she's gonna either take the paper out and put it to the side and act like she like he she had she didn't get him to sign it. Or she's gonna hold on to it or whatever. But I don't think that she's gonna give it to uh Rochelle right away. Um, May is back. They're back at uh, Calvary, and May is in her office. And Bishop walks in. And he said, "After thinking about what you said, I think that it's right. You know, it's only right." And he typed up a draft of what he thinks they should say to the congregation about the divorce. And so he gave her the draft, and he said that you know, feel free to make um, whatever changes you need to make. And so she looked at it, you know, we, uh, at the point that the artist, we don't know what it says, but, you know, she, she, she started to tear up and she basically asked him to close the door behind him. So he walks out and she kind of just drops the paper now, you know, it's, I guess it's going over in her mind. Um, is she really making the right decision? Because once it's out there, it's out there, you know what I'm saying? So this has just been a very sad episode, but, um, but a good episode so I'm gonna uh, end this here and I will talk to you guys uh, in episode 6